This is Tim Howe. I'm the city forester for Macomb. And uh, I understand as part of an Eagle Scout project, we're going to be planting some trees. Now, if, if I seem a little taller than I normally am, uh, I'm standing on the stump of probably one of the largest trees that we had to remove in Macomb. Uh, this tree was a 185-year-old white oak tree. Uh, the tree was here before the cemetery had its first burial. It's witnessed every burial. A lot of our white oak trees are gradually dying from old age. Um, plus, they're in an environment which is not natural. If you look around, there's all grass. In the woods, we have decaying litter leaf and duff, and the soil's much healthier. So these trees are probably have a lifespan of under 200 years in this kind of situation. So what we're going to do as part of the Eagle Project, we're going to plant some replacement trees. We have about a half a dozen different species of oaks, uh, swamp white, fir, chinkapin oaks that we're going to plant in the cemetery in some of the open spaces. And then a little bit later, I think on June 4th, uh, what we're going to do is try to take care of a couple of the older trees that are in decline. We're going to be spreading compost under the drip line and try to make the tree feel more like it's back in a natural environment in the woods uh, where the tree will maybe recover a little bit. This tree here, uh, this is a red oak that was probably planted maybe three or four years ago. This is kind of similar to what we're going to be planting. will come in an 18 inch mesh root bag it'll be about 12 inches tall and the trees come from a nursery that probably produces some of the best trees around uh, Bames Nursery in Rushville that's where I get a lot of my trees not all but a lot of them for the city they have excellent root systems and the seeds come from local trees uh, Don Bame the nurseryman actually goes out, he'll find trees out in the woods that have very good form, very good shape, and he'll say, this is a specimen tree, it's a type of tree that I'd like to sell, and he'll grow it from the acorn. And when it reaches the size, inch and a half to two inch caliper, then he'll sell the trees. And again, we've got six that we're going to try to get in, uh, two swamp whites, two burr oaks, and two chicken have a diversity of species out here, not all one of the same species, so we've got three different species we'll be planting. Um, all three of these trees do well with compacted soil, and that's sometimes a problem in a cemetery where they're mowing back and forth, back and forth with eight or nine hundred pound tractors. Uh, the white oak doesn't do as well, so we, we want to have a diversity. Uh, when we plant these trees, if you notice we've got sod in here. And that's what we'll have to start with first. We're going to dig a hole that is twice the diameter of the root ball. So we've got a, an 18 inch uh, diameter root ball. We're going to uh, dig a hole that's going to be 36 inch across. We'll start with the, painting a circle in the ground and then we're going to shave the sod off as thin as we can get it. We're going to shave that off, set it aside, and then we're going to lay out some tarps next to the planting hole and uh, two strong young men are going to grab a hold of long-handled round-point shovels and dig the hole. Now, we don't want to bury the tree. The whole trick to planting a tree is to have the, the root crown, which is this flare at the bottom. You want that even width or maybe just slightly above the level of the ground. If you plant a tree too deep, uh, it, it'll never become stable. Uh, it, it develops circling roots, just all kinds of bad things. So depth is going to be very critical. When we feel that we have the right depth, uh, we're going to take a, maybe a fence post because we're going to have some steel fence posts to stake these trees up with. We'll lay it across the top of the hole and this hole is going to be saucer shaped. So it'll be like the bottom of a, a saucer. We'll lay it across the top. We'll take a uh, a tape measure and just see and what we'll probably be going for is about 11 inches uh, that seems to be about the right depth 10 to 11 inches and most people think of planting a really deep hole because the roots go down well the roots go out like this so uh, 
a shallow hole uh, deep enough so the root flares right at the level of the ground is what we're going for. Um, the trees come in a mesh root bag. So if we plant the trees in the mesh root bag, they'll look good for two or three years and then the roots are going to run into problems with that mesh trying to get out. So we've got to cut that off and uh, I probably will be doing a lot of the cutting because it's a good way to lose a finger, but I still have most of my fingers. No, I did have all ten fingers, that's good. Um, we'll get that mesh root bag off and we'll gently uh, set the uh, tree into the planting hole. Uh, we don't want to plop it in because we don't want to crack the soil around the roots. And then we'll backfill it. We'll backfill it with loose soil. And once we get it the uh, uh, right level with the, back of the soil, hopefully there'll be enough that we're going to construct a low soil watering berm that's going to go all the way around the outside circle of our planting hole. And then that way, when we water the tree in the summer, because it'll have to be watered several times, and the ground's real hard, uh, we'll pour water right into the, uh, this little basin. It'll rise up and then it'll soak right down into the root ball. Otherwise, if you don't have that, a lot of times you water a tree when the ground's hard, when the roots need it the most, and the water just goes everywhere. It doesn't soak into your root ball. Okay, after we finish uh, building the soil berm, uh, we'll mulch the tree, we'll have wood chips out here, and normally what I do is I just take the wood chips and I just pile it all on the base of the tree, almost like a volcano, but we can't leave it that way, because that's, that's bad. Uh, we'll take the mulch and then we'll pull it away from the trunk of the tree, and we'll end up with about two to three inches of mulch from uh, near the base of the tree, outside to the uh, edge of the watering berm, but right up against the tree, we don't want to have any mulch because a tree bark isn't designed uh, to have wet mulch up against it. If we do that, we're going to have problems with decay in the future. Uh, in the winter, insects will get under that mulch and they'll want to gnaw on the base of the tree. So we'll mulch the tree and then we'll put three fence posts around the tree on the outside edge of the watering berm. And we're going to have uh, web strap ties that will We'll put loosely around the trunk in three locations to the three different um, uh, fence posts. And then the only thing we have left to do is water the tree. And uh, it should do really well. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I planted trees with Girl Scouts and I, I tell you, uh, I, no, I won't say anything about having greater expectations from Boy Scouts because that would get me in trouble and this is going to go viral. Uh, the Girl Scouts did an excellent job. Uh, Paul Blome, the urban forestry professor, uh, his wife, I believe, is a, a Girl Scout leader. And uh, the trees were Ohio Buckeyes, and I saw them yesterday, and they're all doing great. And I'll expect no less from the trees planted by uh, the Boy Scouts. I'm looking forward to it.